Hello students, today we will discuss about the intervertebral disc. Intervertebral disc, you know that it is a secondary cartilaginous joint and as the name itself suggests, this disc present between the two adjacent vertebral bodies. So, when you will have this question in exam, you have to keep few things in your mind which we will discuss in this class. So, what is the first thing is that this disc is made up of fibrocartilage and it lies between the bodies of adjoining vertebrae which starts from C2. Now this is the question. What does it mean that you know vertebral bodies are present between the adjacent vertebra. So is the vertebral body is there between C1 and C2. The question is that will you find the vertebral body between C1 and C2. Will you find the vertebral body between the C1 and the base of your occipital bone? So, when you will see the arrangement of the vertebral bodies, you will check it out that this is your C1 and this is the odontoid process, so this is your C2. The vertebral body is not present here because the body is absent in the C1 and there is no vertebral body above the C1. That means the first vertebral body starts between C2 and C3. So this green color plate which you are able to see here is the plate between the C2 and C3. So this is the first intervertebral disc. Clear? So this is the first question to understand and that's why it is written that it starts from C2 means below C2 and it, it will reach up to the sacrum. Now, it is a secondary cartilaginous joint which is a very commonly asked question. It is a symphysis and when you will see the shape of the intervertebral disc, it is the shape like the vertebral body and its thickness is 7 to 10 mm. So, here in this diagram, you can see that the shape of the intervertebral disc is like the shape of the body of that vertebrae. Clear? And in this image, now this is clear to in your mind that first intervertebral disc is lies between the body of C2, C3. There is no body above the C2 and this vertebral body and above the sacrum. Clear? So, when you will see the whole curvature or the whole length of your vertebral column, you will realize that it contribute one fifth of the total length. And this is the last placement of your uh, intervertebral disc. So, in cervical and lumbar region, the intervertebral discs are thick anteriorly. In thoracic region, the discs are uniformly thick. Clear? So, the thickness is also varying according to the different regions of the vertebral column. But the question is that the thinnest part or you can say thinnest disc are present in the thoracic region. So, when you are having the cervical region, lumbar region, thoracic region, the middle part or the thoracic region are having the thinnest and out of the thoracic, the upper part of the thoracic region is particularly having the thinnest intervertebral disc. The disc contribute one fifth which I told you. Now, this last line is very important. If I will count the intervertebral disc, how many discs are present in the whole length of vertebral column, answer is 23. So this is very important to understand. So I already told you that the discs are not present above C2 and discs are not present in the sacrum and below that sacrum that is in the coccyx. So the first intervertebral disc starts between C2 and C3 and the last will end between the L5 and the sacrum. Now, when you will see the structure, now this is again very important question. What is the structure of intervertebral disc? So, intervertebral disc is having two components. The peripheral part is known as annulus fibrosis, which is a ring shaped structure, and the middle portion is known as nucleus pulposus. So, the, each disc is having the nucleus pulposus, which is a middle part, and the annulus fibrosis, which is a peripheral part. Now, this nucleus pulposus lies in the center of the disc and surrounded by the annulus fibrosis. This 
nucleus pulposus is a soft gelatin like mucoid material and it derived from notochord. Now this is the very important question for your exam. What are the derivatives of notochord? So one of the derivative is nucleus pulposus and the another derivative of the notochord is apical ligament of dense. Apical ligament of dense. Now what is dense? Dense is another name of odontoid process. So whenever we are talking about the structure, this center portion of your intervertebral disc develops from notochord or it is a remnant of notochord which is actually soft gelatinous mucoid material. But as the age advances, the notochord cell disappears in the first decade and mucoid material ultimately replaced by fibrocartilage. Clear? So in this diagram, you can see that this light color area is the nucleus pulposus and these multiple rings which are present in the periphery are annulus fibrosis. Now, when you will see the annulus fibrosis, annulus fibrosis is peripheral part is having the concentric lamellas. Concentric lamellas means multiple rings. A ring outside one more ring and then ring and ring and ring. And this type of 15 to 20 rings are present and this is known as the arrangement like concentric lamella. Now, the important thing is that when you will see these lamella, there is a perpendicular arrangement of the fibers in the lamella. What does it mean? Suppose this is the one band and this band is having the fibers like this. Now this ring band, which is, now if I will make a ring of with this band, now the second band, which is outside this, will having the fibers like this. Again, when you will make one more layer of the ring, that ring will again having fiber like this. Then you will have the outer ring, which again having the fiber perpendicular. That means their fibers are obliquely arranged in the adjacent lamella. One ring is having the fibers like, uh, another ring is having the fibers like 90 degree. So that perpendicular arrangement of the fibers in these concentric lamella is important to increase the strength of the disc. Clear? So whenever you are talking about annulus fibrosis, the two things are very important that it is a peripheral part and it is made up of multiple lamellas which are having the perpendicular arranged fibers. That means though the fibers are oblique, but they are perpendicular to each other. Clear? Now, what is the blood supply? Now, this disc mainly receives the nutrition by diffusion, but its peripheral part is having the blood vessels and these blood vessels come from the surrounding placement of spinal arteries. So, spinal arteries are actually responsible to supply the blood and major blood will reach there by the help of diffusion. Now, when you will see the innervation, the nucleus, uh, uh, this annulus fibrosis is supplied by the autonomic nervous system and it, it receives the preganglionic sympathetic fibers which arises from the gray rami communicants. Clear? Then lastly is its function. So what is the function of intervertebral disc? It is a very important role in providing the shape to the vertebral column. It is a shock absorber. It allows the slight movements of the vertebrae and it is a weight transmission from one vertebrae to the another. Clear? So when you are reading the intervertebral disc, the most important concept is that it starts below the C2, it ends above the sacrum, it is having the two part, the center part is jelly like material which later on replaced by the fibrocartilage which is a actually a no, a derivative of your notochord. It is surrounded by the concentric lamellas and the lamellas are having the oblique arrangement of the fibers and the adjacent fibers are perpendicular to each other and it is a very important role, it has an important role in the shock absorption. The lastly is the clinical applied. Now when 
there is a protrusion of the disc occur it is known as herniation of the disc or slip disc or prolapse intervertebral disc so it is a protrusion of the nucleus pulposus from the damaged or ruptured annulus fibrosus and it will lead to the pain numbness and paralysis sometime so you know that this nucleus pulposus is soft part so what will happen sometimes that you know in this center portion you are having the placement of a spinal cord now if this will get rupture or the tearing will occur this material will come out this material will come out and it protrudes posteriorly like this and this protrusion will causes the compression because it is a bony canal so there is no chance of the extra volume the volume is fixed because of the bony canal so the compartment which is already filled with the nerves and the spinal cord are receiving the extra material and that will provide compression because there is no space for the expansion so this is known as prolapse intervertebral disc the second thing is degeneration of the disc now as the age advances there are some diseases which start degenerating and with advancing age the disc may show degenerative changes and this changes causes reduction in the elasticity and shock absorption so this is the two important applied aspect related to the intervertebral disc so at the end of this class now if you are having this question in exam that intervertebral disc is a which type of joint answer is secondary cartilaginous joint and the most important thing about how many numbers of intervertebral disc are there in the vertebral column you have to keep this thing in mind that they are only 23 because the disc are not present in between the all vertebras and this is the most important concept about this intervertebral disc so this is all for today's class thank you